happy hump day and welcome to Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. This is your midweek dose of us and some pretty awesome people. That's right. And every Wednesday we try to focus on something that's a little bit more related to the, the work and the self. That's right. Just making sure that we're all on the right track with so many changes that have happened in 2020. We want to make sure that you are on the right track into becoming the best version of yourself. Wow, that sounds I know. so out there. It's, but like an, it's like an Instagram quote. Living my best a lost soul and you're not exactly sure what it is you want to do. When they think about getting a new job or when they think about starting their careers, a lot of people Today, Yvonne Kong Ho, career consultant. Yvonne, come and join us Hi, on Kelly. set. Hello. 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 She looks lovely today. Cool. Like, Thank you. It Very must be so nice to get out and actually dress up. Put makeup for like, you know, what seemed like forever. I know. <laughs> oh. I know. But it's it's something that we sort of need to do, especially when we want to put ourselves uh, and put our best foot forward as mm -hmm. well, especially yes. if we're looking for a new career, right? Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Actually, I was just chatting with someone yesterday. You know, I started my career as a special education teacher. So I taught in half life for three years before moving on to becoming a trainer for young people in a training consultancy. And then I moved on to become a corporate trainer where I realized that actually in a university setting, if we can give our young people certain mindsets and mentalities, you know, that they need to have as well as tools for them to build their careers during their university days, it will actually help them to have a greater and longer career trajectory. So I moved on to a university doing career development. And um, it's been actually quite a number of years where I realized I'm, I've, I've worked in three universities. I'm still working in one university now. You know yeah. what? I would never have thought that. You look so young and yet you're yeah. talking about this plethora of experience <laughs> no, that you have. And I'm just like, how? how? Like, <laughs> how old did you start? <laughs> Were you five? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the time when people come and they, they talk to you, um, you mention a mm. career portfolio. Yeah, you're right. Um, so what exactly is a career portfolio and how, how do we go about getting one? How do I, how do I sort this out? <laughs> okay, without sounding too academic, I would say that a career portfolio is where we look at looking at developing ourselves for the next 40 to 50 years. Mm -hmm. So if I were to speak to a very young graduate who is about 25 years old, mm -hmm. yeah. I believe that you know, we will and we can work for the next 40 to 50 years of our lives mm -hmm. meaningfully, being engaged, being confident in what we can bring to the table. And we have to start when we are young. Even if you're not very young now, you can still build a career portfolio. No, is, she, I, is, she, is, she talking, is she talking about you, Barbara? No, like, <laughs> she's like, I'm still so, young. You know, like, um, I'm going to, you know, like, picture, I'll rather, I'll, I'm going to visualize this together with you. Now, in the past, we believe that you need to be a T-shaped professional. You need to be really well versed in the depth of like area or knowledge. Yes. For example, you know, you, you are very good at, let's say, making coffee. Full stop. You're a barrister, very, very good at making coffee. Mm. But you also need to be very good at, for example, customer service. You need to be good at, you know, managing people's emotions. Oh, hi, good morning. You need coffee today, right? You need to be good at other things. So you need the breadth and the depth of knowledge to okay. becoming a barrister. But today, if you want to build a career portfolio, you cannot just be good at making coffee. Maybe you need to be very good at social media marketing. You mm -hmm. need to be very good at Facebook, at Instagram, at Twitter to promote your coffee. So there are multiple areas of depth together right. with the breadth of knowledge. Because in today's world, as we can see, and it's something that I always tell my students, you know, we are talking about being in a VUCA world, right? Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And every time I, I just teach, learned that term the yeah. other day, and I was just like, <laughs> I had no idea what it was. And I was like, oh, okay. It's so quite interesting. It's, it's really interesting. And I always use the example, you know, with my students in class, I say, I will never know when a SARS is going to hit again. And yeah. guess what? Three months later, 
Oh, we are now managing our COVID-19. predicting the future. Like, <laughs> so I told my students, this is really the VUCA world. So mm. the air, multiple areas of depth, if one area is taken away, for example, I can't go out to get my coffee anymore. What do I do? I make coffee at home? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I can go on social media marketing and I make my own cold brew at home and I sell it sell that. on Carousel, for example. Because a good and very stable career portfolio can help us to reinvent ourselves again and again. So how do you build one? I would say that there are various steps to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we believe that in career development, you'll be good to know your values, your interests, your personality, your skills. Because sometimes young people will be like, "I'm not as good as my friend. My friend is very good at A. I I'm not good at this." But there are things that you are good at, and with that, you can build on your strengths to becoming, you know, the best version of yourself. I think I'm going to have a private session with you one day. I'm just like, <laughs> Anytime. I need to know more. Anytime. What is all this stuff going on? <laughs> awesome. Um, well, we're going to take a short break, yeah. but sure. we would actually like to get Yvonne's help to dive deeper with an individual who has identified herself as wanting to find out a little bit more about what she can do and how she can develop her career in different areas. So stick with us here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. We've got more to come with Yvonne sharing how she can help someone specifically right here on the show. Don't go away. For those of you who are staying tuned with us on what you're cooking fast forward, we are still feeling fine. And of course, you're curious as to how you can make your very own cup of nice, refreshing virgin mojito. And of course, finding out who is one of our favorite ladies right here in the hearts of all our national athletes. Remember to catch us on the next episode of What You're Cooking Fast Forward. Welcome back to the Wednesday edition of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Joining us, we have Yvonne Kong, but we've also got another guest, the, the human aspect of this career consulting episode. Um, Ong Wei Yu, who just wants to be known as being as current temp staff. Yeah. Um, so hi, Wei Yu. How are you? Good? Good. Good for today. Good for, good, just good for today. <laughs> just going by, just, just, just getting through day by day. That's the most important thing, so, isn't it? Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, what's your background like? What work you've done before? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was an athlete for most of my life and have recently just left my job as a cabin crew. Okay. Yeah. And now you're a temp staff. And now I'm a temp staff in Sports SG. Okay, so just kind of feeling things out during the pandemic. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, you guys had a chat earlier on really? to better understand um, the next steps you can take. Did you have an inkling before the chat on where you wanted to go or what you, what you wanted your next step to be? I didn't. So I was trying to, I am still trying to figure out what I want to do in life right now. So after having a chat with Yvonne, I kind of know a little bit of where I should be looking at instead of casting my net to every job that I potentially want to try, I should just like focus and you know zoom in on one aspect of 
the potential job that I should. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think yeah. it's important just to point out that these guys had a good like half hour, 45 minute chat before coming on the show because career consulting doesn't just happen like that, right? It's an in-depth conversation to find out a little bit more about her interests. So maybe Yvonne, you can share a little bit about what you did in those 45 minutes sure. to, so that people have a better understanding. No problem. I would say that uh, what I did with, with you, you know, we had a very good chat about her values, mm -hmm. her interests, her personality and her skills. And they are actually different tools that I tried with her um, and I love to use you know things like card games yeah because um, these are actually that values like cards fun. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly it lowers the gut of the person that I'm speaking with so mm -hmm. I say hey let's have a chat and then you know help me to understand a little more about you so from there right, we actually dispute her top 10 values and what really really is important to her because once she knows her values her interests and her personality you know she can really have quite a good inkling as to what she wants to do mm -hmm. for example I give her the example I mean I'm really horrible at baking so you know if I bake with my daughter and I say let's try all kinds of flour homeo flour glutinous rice flour you know self-raising flour plain flour it will get me what I want, but it may not be extremely edible. But here <laughs> I am. You know, Sounds you know. like my baking experience. <laughs> and sometimes I stick to Betty Crocker, you know. Mm -hmm. But with, with you, right, what we did was that at least I helped her to find out, maybe you should work on home meal flour. And let's focus on what home meal flour can bring you to. So I've ascertained that, you know, she's very good with people. She has very good people skills. And her personality is actually very suited to working with children, with young people, you know. But very importantly, she needs to know why she's working and what she's working for. Because that will give her the impetus to keep moving on. If not, she'll be in the right role, but she'll feel very burnt out because she doesn't know how to modulate herself eventually. Mm. So this is like a you know, shout out to every single person. If you're looking for someone who's hardworking, who's diligent, who's conscientious, who's good with people, just hit up with you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Kick back with Barbara. The yeah. New jobs <laughs> Barbara and Kelly will be her agents. Yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're taking Kelly services to a whole new level. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a good one. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So then, were you? Mm -hmm. What? What? What are some of the things you would like to explore then? I think I potentially want to explore something to do with kids, because mm -hmm. I kind of can get on the same level with them. Not saying that I'm childish <laughs> or whatever, but I just find their thoughts very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, ask them what are you gonna do with your life. Some of them would say like, "I'll be a superhero," which is something that not a typical adult would say. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be like, hmm, what kind of superhero? Then they'll tell me more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's quite fun in that aspect, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Yvonne, talk us through like the process, sort of like after you'd ascertained through mm -hmm. a few series of games what, what she should be focusing on. Mm -hmm. What's sort of the next step? I would then look at the phase of life that the person is in. Mm -hmm. So for example, where he isn't extremely young, neither is she very old, but you know, she has plans to eventually, you know, get married, settle down. So she will probably it would be good for her to look at something that gives her a bit more stability. Yet at the same time, you know, I acknowledge the fact that she's young, mm -hmm. she has aspirations, and she shouldn't bury them, right? Mm -hmm. You know, she should also look at what she wants to do. It's a little like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, yeah? yeah. I find mm -hmm. that our young people today, they are very into self-actualization. Yes, and I think that's also another level now called self-transcendence, meaning, you know, you want to achieve your dreams like, very, very quickly. You want to find a better version of yourself, and I totally support that. So everyone yeah. wants to be an Instagram traveler. <laughs> well, you Basically. know, the, the one that lasts is always there, you know, and I totally acknowledge and respect that. Mm -hmm. And I love the energy and dynamism that young people have. Mm. But I also would caution, and I want to remind young people that, you know, at the end of the day, you also need to be grounded. Especially when, let's say, there are bills to be paid at home, daddy and mummy's not doing very well in their jobs because of COVID-19, then maybe it's time for you to step up and support the family. Yet at the same time, for example, maybe in the daytime, do something that pays the bills. But at a side, please focus on something that you want to achieve for yourself. It could be, for example, being, let's say, very good in Microsoft Excel, being very good at Adobe Photoshop, so that you can maybe design your own stuff and then sell it. You know, or if you have always wanted to be in photography, you love photography, then at the side, find a course that you can do so that you can better your skills. So I always believe you can achieve, you know, you can really be a better, sorry, better version of yourself, yet at the same time, help your family, be grounded, stay humble, learn, continue to learn. And be sorry. hungry, right? Absolutely. Mm. So would you say that self-transcendence is something that you have noticed specifically as a trend coming up with all these millennials Absolutely. entering the workforce? Mm. Are there any other trends that you've seen um, or would like to see disappear? 
Wow, that is a very. Hmm, I need to answer this very, very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's true though. I mean, if you ask any um, employer, yeah. they're very afraid of hiring millennials mm. because they can't relate. Mm. So a lot of the time, like you get millennials, and in the next ten years, millennials are going to make up the bulk of our yes. workforce. Yeah. So. <laughs> Employers, especially if they're slightly older, need to get on board with the yes. way these people work, right? Mm. So maybe it's not just as a youth or as a millennial trying to find a job, but it's also the onus is also on the employers mm. to adapt the workplace to the needs of this new, new large generation. workforce, yeah. right? Mm. It's going to be different. Absolutely. I would say that uh, employers do not have to be scared of hiring millennials or the younger generation. You hear because that? You they hear that, employers? They don't need to be scared <laughs> because they really bring a lot of energy, a lot of dynamism, a lot of passion into the workforce, into mm. the workplace. I've seen very healthy workplaces where there's intergenerational learning. You know, and I believe a lot in the concept of reverse mentoring, yeah, whereby the younger people can actually teach the older, you know, like older workers how to do certain things. But I really believe that in this kind of workplaces, you need openness, you need respect, and millennials are actually very willing to work hard. They're very willing to teach. Mm. It's just that there needs to be this healthy, you know, respect for one another, regardless of your age, yeah. And then that's when synergy can happen. So, were you? I'm quite curious. Based on the the chat that you guys had, yeah. what are some of the uh, self realizations, or what what were some of the takeaways that you got from this chat, taking on the next steps that you want to go forward with? I think we did we did a personality test, the DISC. So through that test, I found out that I was more of S and I, right? And yes. what what does that mean? So it's like uh. I don't focus on the end goal, but rather on the process mm -hmm. of getting it's towards the journey it. that yeah. matters, exactly. not the destination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I always thought that I focus. I, I'm really like towards like achieving a goal mm -hmm. because I was an athlete, and then you know we always want to get this and we want to get like champs and all of that. But then through the test, I found out that I honestly prefer. I honestly enjoy the process of getting like the team like playing the team and then uh getting champs for that instead of just you know if i'm not like familiar with my teammates mm. and then we are all just there to like get champions and all then that's not fun at all yeah which which is very relatable in the sports and athletes yes. section because they always say like you you don't win the medal there on the day itself it is one in the process of having that journey. So I think maybe that's where you got it yes. from as well. Correct. Oh, Correct. Yeah. Very interesting. So then what else can we do to help with you? Mm -hmm. I think the next few steps that you know I've identified for her is that I've actually I would say, you know, elaborated mm -hmm. on what are some of the courses that she can look at. I am encouraging her to look at certain certifications and courses so that the trajectory for her can be a lot longer. She can work in something, for example, that's kids related. She knows that she likes children and she has, I was telling her, she says this position that makes people really lower their guts very quickly. Mm -hmm. People trust her very, very quickly. People like her very quickly. And these are strengths. These are, you know, really innately her. But I think, you know, she can definitely be in a role now that involves children, but it may not bring her a very long trajectory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have identified certain courses for her, for her to pursue, for her to find out more. And of course, the finances must come in. Mm -hmm. And then when she gets the certifications and the courses under her belt, I think she can do a lot more. Okay, so were you, would you say that you've benefited from having this session with Yvonne? Yeah, definitely. And what do you think is the biggest takeaway for someone who is maybe a little bit lost, a little bit confused, mm -hmm. as you were, about the future and the next steps to take? Yeah. Is this something that you would recommend and why? I would. Okay, so I never once thought that I should seek professional help regarding this issue. So I've been trying to figure out my future for the past, I think, nine years of my life but until today I found out that you know instead of just casting and trying everything and not knowing what I want I should just focus on one thing which your friends or family wouldn't tell you this kind of thing because mm. they don't really know about it but Yvonne has like 10 20 over years of experience so yeah it definitely helped and Yvonne just to wrap this up quickly uh, what advice would you give to someone 
who's maybe watching and experiencing the same sort of things as where you, aside from, okay, like Barbara, <laughs> for example, uh, any, anybody out there who is looking at a career change, what would be the one piece of advice you would give them to help them take the next step? Mm. Don't aside be, from calling you. No problem. <laughs> Don't be afraid to find out more about yourself. Because mm. sometimes I find that, you know, people, they're afraid of identifying the next steps because either they are afraid to try something new or they don't think that there's something within them that they can bring to the table, which is valuable. All of us have our strengths. All of us are able to bring something valuable to the table. So don't lose that self-confidence. Yeah, and if you feel that you are losing it, you are very lost, you don't know what's going to happen, yeah, find someone who believes in you, take the next step. Awesome, that's yeah. like, the on. That's, that's the pep talk I needed. All right, well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure. Some great insight happening. Um, that is it for today's show. We're going to go for a short break, and Kelly and I will come back to sweat it out with you at home. Ladies, once again, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank We're thank off for a quick around. break. You, we'll see you soon. Thank you. For those of you who stay tuned with us on what you're cooking fast forward, we are still feeling fine. And of course, you're curious as to how you can make your very own cup of nice, refreshing virgin mojito. And of course, finding out who is one of our favorite ladies right here in the hearts of all our national athletes. Remember to catch us on the next episode of What You're Cooking Fast Forward. Kick back with, with Kelly, Kelly and Barbara. And Barbara. <laughs> now, I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago, when we were still doing the morning show, we months. actually had... Months yes, now. months now. Yeah. Wow, it's been that long. Uh, but we actually had Brad Robinson on from Ritual Gym, and they had just launched a new app. So I started doing this app because I, th I think it's really cool. The workouts they do is really functional. But one of the things I've realized out of starting the workouts from their app is that my mobility is absolutely terrible. So for today's <laughs> workout, we have decided that we are going to incorporate a little more mobility work and a little bit more core work to make sure that we can enhance our coordination just that little bit more. So if you are not doing anything at the moment, get on the floor because everything's going to be on the floor today. And if you can start with your legs just in this position like so, and then Pretty what we're going to sure do... there was a Jennifer Lopez song that was like on what? the floor. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is in this position, we're going to come up and open up that hip flexor just on the side there. Very good. Then you drop back down, rotate your legs. And then you come up on the other side you do that and really drive. So you just switch your legs over. Rotate and push up. <laughs> you see, this whole thing about coordination, this is clearly a thing. Okay, 
So try not to move your feet. You just swing your knees left and right. Yeah, like but that. they're facing the wrong way. <laughs> well, then turn around, then push up, and then you go the other way around. And this is and a I great thing to do to sort of like warm up your hip flexors and your joints before you embark on a little more challenging workout. Yeah. The other exercise we're going to do is oh. uh, sort of like a uh, tabletop rotation. So you want to get into a quadruped position on your hands and feet. And then from here, you want to thread your foot through and drop your hand back behind you. Okay. Very good. And then you bring your leg and thread it through and come back into that all four position. Okay. And then you go back the other way. You go back the other way. And then come back again. And then you do it again. <laughs> I feel like this whole coordination thing, Barbara's struggling a little bit. But you want to go nice and, and slow. Ready. It's a good way to work on your hand-eye coordination, <sighs> which is also something that we're going to be working on in Friday's episode as well. How are you doing, Barbara? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah? I'm okay, we're going to stop there. Oh. Are you all right? Yes. All right. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, the next one we're going to be doing Whew. a little bit less coordination, but still a little bit of movement. We'll get into that plank position. Okay. You sign into a plank. A high plank position. Yeah. Yep. High plank. Yep. And then we're going to drop down onto our elbows and then push up. Yep. And this will work your shoulders and your core. So drop down, push up, and alternate which Between hand. Between which one goes up and down, yep. right? Because if not, you get into this weird rhythm. <sighs> okay. And it's really important to hold that core tight. Whew. Are you okay, Barbara? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, oh, another 20 seconds. Okay, this one. Try and keep your bum longer. down. <laughs> Very good. Don't rush it. I'm not. <laughs> and last rep. <laughs> Just trying to cheat. And you're done. Oh, How are you okay. feeling? You know I'm fine. Shoulders 100% activated. All right, let's go on to our back for the last one. We're going to do boat sit, and then we'll go into a half boat. Mm -hmm. Boat sit, half boat. Just up and down. Take it nice and slow. So you want to make sure your legs Oh, we've got to move our mic packs. Um, legs are perpend uh, parallel, parallel to, to the, the ground. ground. Yep, chest up nice and high. Then you're just going to go down. Make sure your shoulder blades and your feet don't touch the ground. We're just going up and down. Woo. And in this position, try and feel as if you are holding a ball underneath your chin. Well, for me, it's more like no double chin, double chin, <laughs> no double chin. <laughs> <laughs> double chin. No double chin. <sighs> double chin. Last Ooh. 10 seconds. Let's go. Stay <sighs> nice and strong in this position. Suck in that core. Last one. And chin. rest. No double chin. Ooh. All right, we're ending on with no double chin. All right. Well, that wraps it up for a nice. That was a quite a nice session in terms of getting the mobility going um, and get that the coordination, blood flowing. which we clearly both need. Coordination. <laughs> Uh, but that being said, I think it was a, a good Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Good hump day. Very, very good Wednesday. Um, do, you, do you like my coordination of I my do. entire outfit, the new UA Phantom 2s? I love I don't these. know if you've uh, noticed, but I literally never wear any other color except for black. It's okay. I'll bring the sunshine <laughs> to you guys. Uh, anyway, we've got a great episode lined up for Friday as well. Make sure you join us again on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara, 8 p.m. on Friday. It's Family Fridays. It is Family Friday. We're going to be having Active Health Coach once in coming in with us and uh, chatting a little bit about how to keep the kids occupied and active. And engaged. And, and engaged. speaking of engagement, uh, also uh, Richard Farmer from Little Kickers, he's going to be joining us, sharing a little bit more about Little, little Kickers and what they do. Little Kickers? Little Kickers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what they do with young children as yep. young as 18 months old. Because, goodness knows, we know that we need to burn out their energy. To Speaking be fair, of I want to just go for that. Because can you imagine being surrounded by, like, 20 of these little toddlers just running around? That would be so cute. Cute. Make, it's like going and playing with puppies. Cute. But I think, uh, speaking of energy and or lack thereof, I think we are done, done and spent for this evening. Enjoy your Wednesday. Happy hump day to you. We'll see you again on Friday. Remember to keep it with us here on Get Active TV. This has been Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. We'll see you Friday, 8 p.m. Bye-bye. <laughs>